Butterflies! You've probably seen a lot of butterflies in your life. They are very popular and glamorous insects, having starred in movies, TV, video games. Or something like that. They may even have been your very first insect friends. He nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and he was a beautiful butterfly. But do you know who they are? You. Who are you? Well, that's sort of a philosophical question, but there are some scientific answers. So let's try that. We can use biological classification to group living things into seven tiers of increasing specificity. You remember kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Well, insects are a class which is divided into many orders. You've got dragonflies, mayflies, beetles, fleas, praying mantises. Butterflies belong to the order Lepidoptera. But actually, Lepidoptera is mostly moths. Moths are nice, but you probably don't think about them all that much, and that's fair. I mean, they're not as pretty, and we don't see them that often during the day. Well, at some point, about 100 million years ago, some moths decided to branch out from the nocturnal lifestyle, and they diversified into seven families of butterflies, which makes butterflies a super family, that's the technical term, called Papillionoidea. This tree here we call a phylogeny. It's based on genotypic analysis, or the comparison of DNA, which is a great technique because it's pretty objective. But the tree is also supported by morphology, or the comparison of certain phenotypic characters, aka physical traits, which is also a great technique because it's very practical. If you're outside and you encounter some fluttery thing, you can't politely ask to see its genome but you can look at these characters to decide if it's a butterfly or a moth. Maybe you're thinking, tell a butterfly from a moth? That's so easy, just look at the colors. And that's true, moths are usually kind of blah, they're gray or white or brown, because they come out at night and there's not a lot of point in dressing up. But there are a few exceptions. Quite a few, actually. These are moths that also come out during the day. They have lots of pretty colors, but they cannot fool the trained lepidopterist, and let me tell you why. The trick is to look here, at the antennae. Butterflies have clubbed antennae, and sort of looks like they have little balls on the ends. Meanwhile, moths have sort of wispy or spindly antennae, and sometimes males will have really feathery antennae like this, which they use to smell the pheromones of females. That's how they find them in the dark. Now, there are a few exceptions to this rule. Burnet moths and castanid moths have club-like antennae, while skipper butterflies have what look like hooks instead of clubs. But not to worry, if your antennae inspection is inconclusive, you have some other options. First, you can try to find a frenulum. This is a little hook thing that comes off of the back wing. It slides into a sheath on the front wing and links the wings together. Most moths have these things, while butterflies never do. But it can be pretty hard to find, so body size is another good character. Moths are, to put it bluntly, chubby and fuzzy, while butterflies tend to be slim and graceful. Wing position is also a giveaway. When they perch, moths usually fold their wings flat over their backs. Sometimes they make them into a little tent, while butterflies prefer to show them off. Sometimes they spread them out in all of their glory. Other times, they fold them up and exhibit the undersides, and some even flap them back and forth for a scintillating effect. Nice. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the seven butterfly families and how to tell those apart. It's a little bit trickier, so you should remember these five characters. So that next time you want to identify a butterfly, you can make sure it's really a butterfly first. Please subscribe if you want to be updated when videos come out, and leave any questions, comments, or suggestions below. Thanks guys!